Welcome to Quincy's Tavern, my friends. What can I get for you? out tonight but I managed to save us some of the meat pie and some mashed potatoes. Let's eat. Alright, here we go. Cannot forget your vegetables. One's for you. Rice! Alright, tell me when. Tell me when. Tell me tell me tell me when Welcome to Quincy's Tavern, my friends. What can I get for you? Well we have anything you could possibly need. We have potions, weapons, magical artifacts, maps to places you need to go. 
What do you need? Not sure. Well, that's a new one. Everyone seems to know what they want when they come here. Hmm. I think I know just the person who could possibly help you. Um. Hello, adventurers. I've seen many adventures over my eons of time, but I hear that you are having enough trouble figuring out what it is you want. My skill set is to help those who can't put to words what their truest desires are, bring them to reality. So tell me, my friends, what is it you truly desire? Interesting, this is a rare object, but I believe I can do this within 24 hours' time. Now, tell me, what is it you're willing to pay for this deal? Alright, make yourself comfortable. I'll see you back in a day. Still awake, traveler. Can't seem to sleep, huh? I get that. But sleep is important. But it must mean that you must have a lot on your mind if you're still up at this hour, huh? I'm always of the mind that you must have a good snack. That might help. Little Chompa, can you bring one of those over here for our friend here? Hi. Sorry. I got, I got a little hungry on the way over. You always, it's always important to have a treat before bed. Sometimes you need to treat yourself. You deserve it. Okay, so apparently somebody took the video of me walking around the uh, floor in the undisclosed room uh, where we were held while the Capitol was being cleared and swept. And they took the video of me passing out um, masks. And it had just been after a conversation with a few members um, from from the Democratic side who were concerned about it being a super spreader event and just our anger, disappointment, whatever. And I was like, well, I'm not gonna be angry. I'm gonna do something about it. So I saw a guy, I don't know if he was the reporter, um, over to the side and um, he had uh, some masks, extra masks. I said, um, I said, do you, do you have any more of those? And he said, Oh, take these. So I said, okay. So I just started walking around the room looking to see who didn't have on a mask. And when I got to people, I would just say, would you like a fresh, clean mask? Part of it was not to make friends, but to save our lives up in there to the extent that um, someone would listen and be willing. Um, that was the goal. Um, one Republican who took it said, well, I, I, I had an old one, but I actually sneezed in it. So thanks. And he, and he took it and he put it on. Um, you know, another talked about being a doctor. Um, one of my Democratic friends was actually on the phone and, um, but had the mask down below his chin. And I said, hey, hey. <laughs> and he pulled the mask up. Um, there were staff who took it. And um, while everybody didn't take it, I was glad that the ones who did, did, uh, because maybe, maybe it made us a little bit safer.
going around the room, I only have one mask left. I think that was a good thing. If it helped us to not be in a super spreader event any any bit, um, it's like, you know, it's like, need a change? Well, <laughs> I was like, need a health person. How did I get into tombstone cleaning? It's a long story, but I can give you a short answer. I was in the middle of an incredibly high conflict divorce and having to adjust from being a stay at home mom for 10 years to sharing custody of my children from Virginia to Florida. As you can imagine, this was a huge adjustment for me and I needed a therapeutic outlet. I was doing genealogy research one day came across someone else doing tombstone cleaning and decided to give it a try. The whole process of the last three years has been a metaphor to my healing from the divorce.
President Trump sought to overturn the results of an election. He sought a coup by misleading people with lies. My father and our neighbors were misled also with lies. And I know where such lies lead. As an immigrant to this country, I would like to say a few words to my fellow Americans and to our friends around the world about the events of recent days. Now, I grew up in Austria. I'm very aware of Kristallnacht, or the Night of Broken Glass. It was a night of rampage against the Jews carried out in 1938 by the Nazi equivalent of the Proud Boys. Wednesday was the Day of Broken Glass right here in the United States. The broken glass was in the windows of the United States Capitol. But the mob did not just shatter the windows of the Capitol. They shattered the ideals we took for granted. They did not just break down the doors of the building that housed the American democracy. They trampled the very principles on which our country was founded. Now, I grew up in the ruins of a country that suffered the loss of its democracy. I was born in 1947, two years after the Second World War. Growing up, I was surrounded by broken men drinking away their guilt over their participation in the most evil regime in history. Not all of them were rabid anti-Semites or Nazis. Many just went along, step by step, down the road. They were the people next door. Now, I've never shared this so publicly because it is a painful memory. But my father would come home drunk once or twice a week, and he would scream and hit us and scare my mother. I did not hold him totally responsible because our neighbor was doing the same thing to his family, and so was the next neighbor over. I heard it with my own ears and saw it with my own eyes. They were in physical pain from the shrapnel in their bodies and in emotional pain from what they saw or did. It all started with lies and lies and lies and intolerance. So being from Europe, I have seen firsthand how things can spin out of control. I know there is a fear in this country and all over the world that something like this could happen right here. Now, I do not believe it is, but I do believe that we must be aware of the dire consequences of selfishness and cynicism. President Trump sought to overturn the results of an election and of a fair election. He sought a coup by misleading people with lies. My father and our neighbors were misled also with lies. And I know where such lies lead. President Trump is a failed leader. He will go down in history as the worst president ever. The good thing is that he soon will be as irrelevant as an old tweet. But what are we to make of those elected officials who have enabled his lies and his treachery? I will remind them of what Teddy Roosevelt said. Patriotism means to stand by the country. It does not mean to stand by the president. Now John F. Kennedy wrote a book called Profiles in Courage. A number of members of my own party, because of their own spinelessness, would never see their names in such a book, I guarantee you. They are complicit with those who carry the flag of self-righteous insurrection into the capital. But it did not work. Our democracy held firm. Within hours, the Senate and the House of Representatives were doing the people's business and certifying the election of President-elect Biden. What a great display of democracy. Now, I grew up Catholic. I went to church, to Catholic school. I learned the Bible and my catechism and all of this. And from those days, I remember a phrase that is relevant today, a servant's heart. It means serving something larger than yourself. See, what we need right now from our elected representatives is a public servant's heart. We need public servants that serve something larger than their own power or their own party. We need public servants who will serve higher ideals, the ideals in which this country was founded, the ideals that other countries look up to. Now, over the past few days, friends from all over the world have been calling and calling and calling me. 
calling me distraught and worried about us as a nation. One woman was in tears about America, wonderful tears of idealism about what America should be. Those tears should remind us of what America means to the world. Now I've told everyone who has called that as heartbreaking as all of this is, America will come back from these dark days and shine our lights once again. Now you see this sword? This is the Conan sword. Now here's the thing about swords. The more you temper a sword, the stronger it becomes. The more you pound it with a hammer and then heat it in the fire and then thrust it into the cold water and then pound it again and plunge it into the fire and into the water, the more often you do that, the stronger it becomes. I'm not telling you all this because I wanted to become an expert sword maker, but our democracy is like the steel of this sword. The more it is tampered, the stronger it becomes. Our democracy has been tempered by wars, injustices, and insurrections. I believe, as shaken as we are by the events of recent days, we will come out stronger because we now understand what can be lost. We need reforms, of course, so that this never ever happens again. We need to hold accountable the people that brought us to this unforgivable point. And we need to look past ourselves, our parties and disagreements and put our democracy first. And we need to heal together from the drama of what has just happened. We need to heal, not as Republicans or as Democrats, but as Americans. Now to begin this process, no matter what your political affiliation is, I ask you to join me in saying to President-elect Biden, President-elect Biden, we wish you great success as our president. If you succeed, our nation succeeds. We support you with all our hearts as you seek to bring us together. And to those who think they can overturn the United States Constitution know this, you will never win. President-elect Biden, we stand with you today, tomorrow, and forever in defense of our democracy from those who would threaten it. May God bless all of you, and may God bless America.